The Kosh Kuala coming back at you with another lesson, giving all glory on in prisons too. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Achakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the great millstone who rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. Uh, this lesson is going to be on this specific word right here trans, uh, transmogrify. Transmogrify. All right, transmogrify. Uh, the reason I want to do it on this, uh, I was watching about like a day or so ago, or yes, you know, something like that. I was watching uh, uh, Apostle Ramla's video, and he had mentioned this word, and I kind of just went into it. And another interesting thing that I saw in it as well, because you know the times that we're in, whenever you do a Google search of a, a specific word, it shows the use of the word throughout the time. So, you know, all the way going back to the 1800s, 1850, 1900, 1950, and it exponentially shot up during the times that we're in now because the word transmog uh, transmogrify, which transmogrify, salakia, which means a transform in a surprising or magical manner, is something that's becoming what you call more, uh, or you could say is becoming not far-fetched anymore. Something's happening, okay? <clears throat> Something's going to happen to the men of the Lord, the elect 144. They will transmogrify. They will change in an instant, all right? They, in a surprising or quote-unquote magical manner, they will. So that brings us to, of course, the first scripture, which I'm sure all brothers have this in their mind. Uh, you know, before I even brought it out, 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 says, In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You see that? Verse 53, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality so yes we are going to transmogrify which is change in a, a majestical sense uh, you got to remember when you know when the lord comes back yeah matter of fact let me let me find this real quick okay let me get this real quick See if it pops up here. There you go. Isaiah 47 and 3. It says, Thy nakedness shall be uncovered. And who's that? Esau. You know, all the lies and the scandals that you've been up to, you know, being scandalous as hell. You know what I'm saying? Being being um sneaky, sly, slivery, any type of word you can come up with or construct in your mind as an adjective to Des describe how this man is a, a, a sneaky individual you're going to be uncovered okay thy nakedness shall be uncovered yeah thy same shall be uh shall uh, be seen i will take vengeance and i will not meet thee as a man and that's yahweh shai yahweh shai is not going to meet these peons on this earth as a man as he did 2000 some odd years ago okay when he came on the earth 2,000 some odd years ago, he came to do um, what he was uh, proposed to do. You see what I'm saying? Okay. When he came, he had to come in the flesh, you know, to make amends of, of things. Okay. When you, let's get that word amend real quick. Amend. All right. All right. The word amend, it means make minor changes. <laughs> So the Lord had to come and make these changes or it got more accurate, all right, or more up to date. So when Yahweh Shai came, he had to make things more accurate, more up to date. He had to make uh, really big changes, you know, but he had to make these changes. He had to modify things, okay, um, to get the elect to, you know, ultimately you know, ultimately to save Israel and, um, and what is it? And to pretty much atone for his sins and his actions that he did when he was Solomon, Adam, so on and so forth. Okay. 
So he, he came and made amends. So after he did that, he was translated into the heavens. Okay. And then that's where you get Isaiah 47 when he says, I will not meet thee as a man. So when he comes back, he's already trans, uh, he's already transmogrified. He's already made a transformation in a surprising manner that Esau is not going to be ready for when he comes back. Esau's already seen Yahweh Shai come as a man. And even when he was as a man, he had ultimate power. But since he's transmogrified and he's, he's, he's put into his celestial form, which he's going to come back, Esau is going to be absolutely surprised, right? In the manner of which he is going to present himself to them as. And that's going to happen to the elect. They're going to transmogrify. All right. So again, 1 Corinthians 15 and 52 in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So in a very quick, I don't know if y'all can hear me plucking my fingers, but it's very quick, like a shoot. The, the scriptures say it best. A twinkling, a twinkling of, eye, of an eye is quicker than a pluck. <laughs> you know, it says as the last trump at the last trump, right? which means the very last seconds. The scriptures do say the righteous shall scarcely be saved. Also, uh, the last trump is when the, when these missiles hit. During That's during the time when these missiles hit, okay? It'll be the last, you know, go around, last hurrah for America, okay? It says, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be rise incorruptible and, and we shall be changed, right? Because the, the scriptures do say the dead in Yahweh Shai uh, will rise. Um, uh, what's that? In um, First First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, it says the dead in Yahweh Shai shall rise. All right. And they're going to rise incorruptible. Now, those are the ones who kept the faith. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, you know, as men, we, we've known men in, the, in, the, in this faith, in this truth, in this thing of ours. That, you know, have passed on, have made their transition, but they're going to come back and be transmortified. Uh, you see, this is Baruch chapter three. And uh, let's see, 26. I'm, this is an application of the script. So it says there were the giants famous from the beginning. So you can go all the way back to the book of Genesis and get some more understanding that were of so great stature and so expert in war. Right now, let's take, you know, extract some, some, or yeah, just extract some, some knowledge off of this. And, um, also, you know, application of the script as well, you know, you can you can use words in different meanings too, okay? Um, there's you know even when you like prime example. Before I get to my point, prime example you go to Matthew, the twenty fourth chapter. It talks about um, earthquakes in diverse places. I'm here if I can find it, you know. So like yeah. It talks about earth, earthquakes in diverse places. Now that yeah, that's that's literal, okay? Because we do see earthquakes in diverse places, but if you want to apply it to something, uh, it, it could be a earth, like an earthquake, like in a sense of a, a earth shaking event, meaning like some someone died or did, like prime example, Kobe. Yeah, I'm gonna say it, Kobe. Everyone in the entire world was shaken by that. The entire earth was shaken by that. That's an earth shaking type thing. But would we break it down like that? No, because we'll break it down how it really means, like literally earthquakes in diverse places. You see what I'm saying? But you can apply and extract certain things from the script because the scriptures are manifold. All right. They have they have a main meaning and then you can have applications of a lot of meanings, you know, but there's only one private interpretation and there's only one breakdown you know you can bring your point across with a script you know and this is exactly what i'm doing here so it says there were the their giants 
So why I'm bringing this out is because I'm using this word transmogrify. Uh, Back then, we used to be something. All right. And today, our people as a whole, we're not too much of anything. And I'm going to say it just like that. Now, let me say this. I'm not saying this in a sense to discourage anybody because you have to look at yourself as a king and a priest because that's what the scriptures say. You got to look at yourself as a God. But understand in Psalm 82 and 6, which I just quoted, you got to read the next verse, but we shall die like men, which you got to bring a form of humility in your confidence. OK, you can be confidence, but always practice the humility. So there was a time back in the day where we were something. We were leaping over walls. We were taller in stature. I'm, I'm speaking physically these things. We were closer with Yahweh by Shemiel Shai. We were bringing fire down from heaven. We were destroying um, destroying nations with 300 men. You see what I'm saying? Abraham, Gideon with 300 men. Okay. Uh, uh, Jephthah taking down a nation. You know, we uh, uh, Samson, things of that nature. When you read the scripts about um, Reuben, Gad, and half the tribe of Manasseh being the men of war, look at us today. When you read about us, we were so valiant back then. We were of great stature. We were, now I'm applying this, giants in a sense of we were big time, okay? And yes, in a sense, we were greater in stature. It says famous from the beginning, right? You know, how Jake be getting their fame nowadays is by selling out. And then it's a fame that's ultimately what you could say, um, controlled by Esau. So it's not really a fame, if you see what I'm saying. It's like a, how can I say it? It's a diluted, um, it's just fake, you could say. It's not the word I'm thinking of. There's a word, but maybe it'll pop up later. It says, uh, continuing, says that we're so great stature and so expert in war. Now, don't you want to get back to this? Because when you when when the elect transmogrify, um, transmogrify, I'm trying to not say morgue because that goes into like, you know, it's mog transmogrify. We're going to get back to being giants and get back to the fame from once was in the beginning and get back to being such a great stature and get back to being experts in war and ultimately export experts in everything that we do. We're going to get back to that. We're going to change quote unquote magically you see what i'm saying this is matthew chapter 20 uh salakia matthew chapter 6 and 27 it says which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature here's the word stature it means the natural height of a body a height okay uh it says build a structure and like again you can take the word build or you can take the word structure and put it in a, a different metaphorical sense. Let's get back to how the structure was when Israel was in rulership. You see, let's build the kingdom of David again and get it back to its correct stature. You see what I'm saying by using these words and the application and applying these things. OK, yes, stature does in a physical sense mean a natural height. And at the same time, yes, Yahweh Shai, he was speaking about that. He was, he was saying this in a sense of this is a, a light feat to do, to add one cubit to your stature. When you have faith, uh, uh, and, and a, uh, a great amount of faith, when, when he was on the water walking to Peter, he's like, look, walking on water. He was in a sense saying, look, bro, like walking on water is easy. Changing, changing your stature is easy. You see, and it's the same thing that the Lord is going to do to us when we transform. OK, he's going to change our stature physically, mentally, spiritually, everything. Our stature is going to change. It also um, when you go into this word stature, it has the, the prefix uh, uh, sta, all right, which means to stand, set down, make or be firm. He is going to stand us back up. OK, because we are a contrite people right now. And he's going to put us in a stand to where we are on a pedestal above all these other nations and transform us together as a nation, man. All right. 
transmogrify. That's what's going to happen to the nation of Israel. You see? And it's a beautiful thing, man. And, and that was a good word that the apostle has said. I had to go and look it up. Because this is a, a word like this is something that you want to attach to your name. You know, dang, he was one of the ones who were transformed. You want to, this is what we're fighting for. Certain things like this, being transformed, being taken out of these chains of darkness, getting spiritual power, um, uh, praising the Lord in um, the most perfect manner. You see, that's like one of the main things. We can actually praise Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in a perfect manner. Once we get transformed, we're practicing the uh, the the righteous acts right now. In a, in a sense, it's, it's low key kind of difficult to praise the Lord how you want to be how you want to praise Him in this society, man. And that's how Esau made this world. So you know, literally, you have to be transformed uh, to do even better. You know, but right now we strive for the perfections. We strive for the masteries. Uh, we don't, you know, look backwards. We reach forward for the prize, you know, the prize at hand, Lucy paraphrasing in um, Philippians, the third chapter. You see, so keep fighting so you can be transformed or transmogrified. <laughs> I like that word. I keep saying it. So, you know, Lord willing, this was edifying and encouraging. I want to give all glory on and praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Dash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone to rule and teach well. Peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruits. Brother Kashkwa until the next time I want to say shalom. And like always, repent for Yahweh Shai is on his way back and he's coming sooner than what me and you believe. Shalom.